Hello everybody. Welcome back to the King of Projects and our next project. What you see in front of you is the Dynalogic Hyperion. It's the first MS-DOS based portable computer ever made. Now I know in 1981 the first portable computer is the Osborne 1 but it ran CPM and this came out in 1982. Now I know also that the compact portable came out in America in 1982 but this is Canadian based and it was made three months before the compact portable so this is technically the very first portable MS-DOS Bay computer made and it had a lot of good features it had a built-in 7 inch decently decently sized amber monitor it has two floppies already built in a keyboard that folds in and actually snaps in place so it's easy to carry. It's got this nice carry handle at the top and it has a video out jack in the back so you can actually connect it to uh, a monitor and get CGA graphics out of it. So it had a lot going for it but it also had a couple of things that just doomed it. One thing is, is that the floppies they were not dependable. They started having problems a lot. Uh, you could tweak them and get them back into line and they'd go out again. And the other thing that really was a problem is that this is MS-DOS based and so it's IBM compatible but only about 95 percent. And that sounds pretty good but 95 percent is enough for a fair amount of software not work. The stuff that you really want to use and so the compact had no problem uh, taking over sales of this and they don't so this only lasted two years but I've got this one and uh, I worked before it had uh, a problem a couple of years ago where uh, you couldn't read anything on the monitor it was distorted and I found out that it was the character generator all the letters numbers anything you see on the screen is generated by one chip and that chip was damaged so I managed to order one and get it replaced, but now it's got a different problem. It takes a minute for it to fade in. Here, let me, uh, let me get you off the mount so you can see closely what it's doing. It's booting, then it's resetting, and then it's resetting and booting again. It just does this over and over. Now, this, this computer has had several cold solder joints that I've repaired and uh, although this could be a, a CPU problem I think I'm gonna check out more cold solder joints I have a feeling that might be the smartest thing to check out first so let's dig in okay first thing to do is to take the keyboard off Just a uh, phone jack type plug. And I think it's only got two screws that are down deep here in the handle. If I remember right, I think they're attached to the case. All I have to do is unscrew them, which is a nice touch. Also because I don't think you'd ever get them back down in those holes. There we go. There we go. A little gentle brute force. There we go, finally, holy cow. See, that's another problem with this. It fits very tightly in this case. Something's rubbing somewhere. It would be nice if I could uh, find what that is. Maybe, well, since I've got the thing open. But here it is. Of course, the main board's on the back. It's actually got two main boards This one's got the CPU, which of course is a Z80 back in uh, 1982. It's got ROMs, 
this is the character generator that I've replaced. And uh, let's see what else have we got. I believe that's the video chip right there. We got some memory on the other side, and then yeah, pretty much the input output is is the other board. The power supply is right here. You even got a little fan, and then of course there's a cage for the two floppies. I'm going to pull out that board first and see what we've got. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, off camera I tried something, I plugged it back in, tried to reboot it, and uh, it tried about, I tried it about three different times and one of the times it booted. So right there it tells me it's not a bad chip because it's not going to suddenly be good for one cycle. If a chip goes bad, it's, it's usually dead. So I about guarantee you it's either a bad connection or a bad solder joint. So first we're going to take the power supply out and take a close look at it. Okay, first we need to get the power cables out of the way. And to do that, I'm going to need to loosen this board and see if I can tilt it back. I think, if I remember right, it can. Sometimes it helps when you've been in something before, but that also means it broke down before, so. There's a plus and a minus there. Between the two boards, there is a metal spacer. So if they fall, I gotta keep track of them. these bottom ones have got to do it too, if I remember right. Yeah, they go through the board. The spacer spinning. Had to hack together a lot of screws because uh, this thing was missing a bunch when I first opened it, I rem if I remember right. Yeah, see now, there goes the metal spacer over here. I need to take off the floppy cable to give us a little more room. Get these cables loose. Power cables to the board. Power cable to back area, I think that's to the floppy controller, if I remember right. Uh, I think there's a small one down inside, but we can get that once we get the board out. Oh, there's one here. There. I believe that's for, uh, I believe that's video. I believe that's the video output cable. All right, now, here we go. There we go. Ah, yes, there's one more little guy right there. There we are. And the board's out. So there's the back side. You can see that's where they have all the memory. Got some more EEPROMs there. That's mostly for input output. Uh, let's see. I think that's for uh, a math coprocessor right down there. I'm not sure. Can't remember. But let's put that aside so we can get the uh, power supply out. There. 
There we go. Now let's get the power cables off of there. Sorry, my hands are in the way. And there we are. I had replaced a lot of the, uh, the capacitors on here. Most of the small ones, the big ones, the big ones have been fine and they're still fine. But uh, yeah, I've replaced all the little ones here. I removed, there was a, 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 a mica film capacitor there. I got rid of that. I uh, know there's still one here, but it doesn't show any signs of cracking, which, you know, you always see in one that's really degraded. So, well, I'm going to take this bracket off. Well, yeah, I'll, I'm going to take this bracket off so I can see every single uh, solder joint, and I'll be back with you. Okay, I've, on the power supply board, I've got a couple of joints that are possibly iffy. Uh, there's nothing for sure on them. I'm, I'm going to resolder them, but I'm also going to take these two boards apart, and I'm going to check first every power supply solder joint on both boards. So I've taken out two more screws and the spaces between them. The only thing that's holding it together is where they merge at this jack. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> I didn't have you in the stand, so. Alright, I'm going to check those and I'll be back. And also, as a side note, I've, before it stopped working altogether, I also had it where the screen was unstable. It was flickering at the bottom and shrinking and stuff, and that usually has something to do with the, uh, the horizontal part of the circuit or the flyback. And, of course, the flyback still works, but, of course, just like a lot of flybacks, it's losing its potting. It's turning into goo and running down on the board which is really nice to try to trace this circuit but also I'm gonna take a look at this if I can hold on let me get this where it'll focus on the right part there we go there we go note the goo all over the board and if you take a look it's also on the back wiper of this pot and that pot is labeled, is it focusing? I can't even tell. It's labeled size. If you can't tell, I can. Um, so that goo may be down on the wiper of that potentiometer and that might be part of what's giving that kind of damage. It was not a bad part. It was like the old days on a TV where it was flickering. You smack the side of the thing and it would straighten out so it's a literally a bad connection somewhere and goo down into a pen, potentiometer will be a bad connection so i'm gonna i'm gonna spray and see if i get that goo out of there okay i just spent a bunch of time getting the potting that had gooed all over the power supply on the bottom of the board scrubbing it off with some acetone so i could check out the solder joints that were under it you couldn't see a thing that sticky goo on it and I have a couple. I'm going to resolder. I don't know if you can see it. These two right here, they have very little solder. And I could swear when I move this one here, it looks like it may be cracked. So we're going to try that. Okay, I took air of those uh, two solder joints to see if that's it. Also took some sandpaper to this, the power connector because uh, it looked like it had some uh, black material on all the pins. This thing, ever since I've had it anyway, has been notorious for power supply problems or power cable problems. The pins were loose here. Uh, they were dirty. Also, I am not a fan of how these are made. See, these, these wires are just pushed into the top of this. There's no it's not sealed. There's nothing to hold them. You know, these, these wires are stiff, so just maneuvering them around, moving them around or down through the ears, 
those wires can be pulled up out of and I pushed several back down into their uh, their connector they can easily be pulled out of this uh, out of this uh, connector and uh, you know on the power the main the one that plugs into the uh, power supply it's the same way uh, that one's actually easier to do because it's got a wire on both sides because it makes one half of them go to the power supply for the floppies and one half of them goes to the power supply for the boards so they just shove a, a wire down in there and any kind of tension or uh, pulling can, can pull that up out of there so I checked all those made sure they were shoved down into the, uh, the connector and I'm gonna reinstall the power supply board well, I've got the boards back in. It's all reassembled, keyboards on. I didn't find anything exactly Eureka, that's it. But there were several things that were iffy. The wires in, in all the power connectors, I used a screwdriver to jam them back down in there, make sure they're in there tight. Uh, there looked like there was some contamination on the... Uh, uh, prongs of the power supply board where the connect the power supply connector uh, goes. Uh, I didn't really expect that. That seemed pretty dirty. I used some. I had to use some sandpaper on that for quite a while to clean that up. Uh, I uh, took care of some solder joints on the power supply board, and I think that's it. So let's see. If, let's see if there's any difference. the cursor will it stay it's booting now that's more like it now that's what it's supposed to do this is uh I downloaded these discs. I've managed to find all the software that originally came with the unit and uh, made some uh, discs for them. So this is what you would normally see when you use the master disc. So that did it. Whatever it was, I don't know which thing it was, if it was the wiring or the solder joints or the uh, contamination on the connector or any combination of the three. But uh, that seemed to take care of it. So I hope you'll join me for the next one. Catch you later.